Hi guys and welcome to ESL and eyeshadow. Today is an ESL day and we're going to be looking at quite a tricky grammar point and that is gerunds and infinitives. Now gerunds and infinitives are quite scary because basically you need to learn which takes a gerund and where to use an infinitive. And similarly to the irregular past, you're just going to have to learn a list of each one. But there are some tricks that help you to tell when you should use the gerund and when you should use the infinitive. So first of all, let's look at the difference between a gerund and an infinitive. A gerund is formed by taking a verb and taking ing and putting them together. And yes, this is also how we form the present continuous, but the difference is a gerund is used as a noun. It's not used as a verb. So it's the name of something. Let's take a look at the difference, first of all, between present continuous and a gerund. For example, I am reading. I am reading. This is conveying the action that I am doing at the present moment. I like reading. So it's read plus ing together to form the present continuous. Now let's take a different sentence. I like reading. Here, reading isn't an action, it's an activity, it's a noun, it's the name of the thing that I like. The same as I could say, I like ice cream, or I like pizza. I like reading. So here, this is a noun, it is the name of the activity. So when you need to use an action as a subject in a sentence, we use the gerund. So for example, reading is my favourite hobby. Learning English helps to improve your confidence. Now, there is a second rule. And the second rule for when we use the gerund is if it follows a preposition. And this is true for phrasal verbs too. So whenever you see a preposition, likely after the preposition will be a gerund. For example, I thought about, preposition, calling, gerund, my grandmother, but I was too tired. Let's look at that again. The preposition is about. I thought about calling my grandmother, but I was too tired. So because we've used the preposition about, we follow with the gerund. I thought about calling. We can't say, I thought about to call, because call and to, together with of, the preposition, of and to, can't go together. Let's look at a different one. Are you planning on, phrasal verb, to plan on. Are you planning on going to the party? Here, going to the party is the subject, it's the activity. So we use the gerund. So after a preposition, use a gerund. Now, this isn't exactly a rule, but it can help you when choosing the right or wrong word in an exam. So, gerunds usually show activities that take place either before or at the same time as the main verb in the sentence. So, for example, I remember closing the door. I remember now closing the door before. So I'm remembering a previous activity. They enjoy making crafts in class. 
they're enjoying an activity that's happening at the moment. Similar to the I like reading. So remember, when it's an activity, use a gerund. After a preposition, use a gerund. And if the activity is taking place at the same time or before, a gerund is likely what we will use. So, next thing. Some verbs can take either a gerund or an infinitive and there is no change in the meaning. And these words are like, love, hate, so verbs of preference, with the exception of enjoy. Enjoy must always be used with a gerund, but any other verb of preference can be used with either a gerund or an infinitive, and there is no change in the meaning. For example, I like to read. I like reading. It means the same thing. The same is also true with start, begin, and continue. So for example, it started to snow, the infinitive, it started snowing, the gerund. Both mean the same thing. So if you see a verb preference that isn't enjoy, or start, continue, or begin, you can choose either the gerund or the infinitive, and both will be correct. Now, let's look at the infinitive. As with the gerund and prepositions, with an adjective, we would follow with an infinitive. This isn't always the case. There are some occasions where we can use a gerund, but for 99% of the time, if you see an adjective, follow it with the infinitive. So for example, it's fun, adjective, to play video games at the weekend. It's helpful, adjective, to learn grammar rules, infinitive. So when you see an adjective, follow that with the infinitive, if the adjective isn't being used to describe a noun. Now, the next time that we use an infinitive is with pronouns or a noun. So, for example, do you want me, pronoun, to call, infinitive, you, pronoun. The students asked their, pronoun, teacher, noun, to help them infinitive, to help. So here we can see that after using a pronoun or a noun, we're usually going to follow that with the infinitive. The students asked their teacher to help them. If we said the students asked their teacher helping them, this would change the meaning of the sentence. By using the infinitive, we're saying, help, can you help me? Meaning you're in trouble, you don't understand, and you require help. If you change to the gerund, the students asked their teacher helping them, it means the teacher is already helping them and they ask them another question. So you must be careful with whether you're choosing the gerund or the infinitive because it does change the meaning of the sentence. Now, as with the gerund, the activity taking place at the same time or before, with the infinitive, it's usually an action that's following. So for example, he wants to learn Japanese. So that's want now to do something later. I need to tidy up my bedroom. I need to do it now, I'm going to do it in a moment. So if it's a short time, it's still following. So there's a sequence involved. 
So let's just go over those rules one more time. With a gerund, we use the preposition. So I thought about calling my grandma. When the action is a subject, uh, I like reading. Things that take place before or at the same time as the verb. I remember closing the door this morning. When we're looking at the infinitive after adjectives. So it was helpful to learn grammar rules. When it's after a pronoun. The students asked their teacher to help them. And when things follow in sequence, for example, I refuse to wait any longer. So let's just quickly look, before we move on, let's just quickly look at how using a gerund or an infinitive changes the sentence. And we're going to use the verb stop for this. So I'd like you to think and imagine in your minds there's a man and he's playing the guitar. So there he is playing away with his guitar and suddenly he stops. The man stopped verb, playing the guitar, the action. Now think about this sentence. A man's walking along the street, he sees a guitar, he picks up the guitar and he begins Playing. The man stopped doing his first action to play the guitar to do a second action. So just by changing the gerund to the infinitive, we go from someone who is doing an activity, playing the guitar, to someone who is walking, stops and starts a second action to play the guitar. And remember, there are some verbs where there is no change in the meaning. So verbs of preference, with the exception of enjoy, enjoy must use the gerund, and things like continue, start, and begin. Now we're going to talk about the bare infinitive. And the bare infinitive is when we use the infinitive, the verb, without using to. And this is when we're giving instructions. So for example, sit down. I don't need to say to sit down or sit to down. I just say sit down because I'm giving an instruction. This is also true for verbs of the senses. So for example, have you heard, verb of the sense, the news? Not, have you heard to the news? You don't need the to. Um, and whenever we use a modal verb that doesn't include to as part of the modal verb. So for example, have to, need to, want to, they require to. But every other modal verb, so could, can, should, must, these do not use the to. If you are using a modal verb, should, can, could, never use to after the modal verb. Okay, so now I'm going to put up on the screen some practice for you. Uh, these are a list of 10 gerund and infinitive questions. And what we're going to do now is you can pause, answer the questions, and then we're going to go through the answers together. So, bye. Okay, how did you find that? I hope it was a bit easier after listening to my breakdown of the instructions for you. So, let's go through the answers to these questions. My dad finally gave up smoking at the age of 49. Gave up is a, prep, is a phrasal verb. Up is a preposition. So you must use the gerund 
ing smoking i really enjoyed listening to those mp3s you sent me thanks again enjoy is the one exception to the verbs of preference so whenever you see enjoy, you must use the gerund form ing. Can you afford to buy so many presents? With the verb afford, the collocation is always to, because you're saying, can you afford now to do something next? So it's the sequencing again. You should practice juggling every day or you'll never learn. Here we use ing because we're describing the activity. Juggling is the subject of the sentence, so it needs to be a noun. How did you learn to speak Japanese so well? Remember from earlier our example, learn to do something. I thought we discussed going to India and now you want to go to China. Here we would use going, the ing, because we're talking about a previous activity, something that happened in the past. It happened before, so we're using ing. Number seven, we finally managed to find my passport and then we left for the airport. Here we would use the infinitive to find because it's in sequence. We managed to find my passport, one action, and then left for the airport, second action. Number eight, I look forward to seeing you when I come back next week. Remember, I said phrasal verbs include using the gerund. So look forward to, although it includes to, it's not being included as the infinitive, it's being included as a preposition, as part of the phrasal verb look forward to. So here we would say look forward to seeing you when I come back next week or I look forward to hearing from you in the future. I look forward to meeting you. Number nine. It was very kind of Jack to offer to babysit this weekend. When you make an offer, it's for something you're going to do in the future. So you make the offer now and you're going to do the action later. So here we would use the infinitive because again, it's a sequence. He offered to babysit next weekend. One, two, three. Number 10. No, I refuse to wait a moment longer. So here we would use the infinitive to wait because we're refusing it now and we're going to not wait in the negative any longer. So, I hope these grammar tips have helped you understand the gerunds and the infinitive a little bit more. I know they can be tricky, so if there are any that you're not sure about, please do leave a comment down below and I will do my best to get back to you and answer you as soon as possible. And if there are any particular grammar points that you're having trouble with, leave a comment below and I'll try and make a response video to help you understand them a little bit better. If you've enjoyed today, please do like and subscribe for additional ESL content in the future. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.